Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, then skip down to verse 6. It says, now faith. Somebody shout, now faith. That wasn't too good of a shout, New City. Come on, say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand the word that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Hmm. Skip down to verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible, somebody say impossible, to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I want to talk today about a faith that pleases God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, a faith that pleases God. That was the wrong neighbor. Go ahead and look at somebody else. As Pastor Steve said, your, your second choice. Say, neighbor, a faith that pleases God. Come on and put those hands together as you take your seats. We honor the Lord today for being in his presence in his house. We thank God for Pastor Steve. Come on, can we give a hand for our pastor? Bible says that God, well, God says that I will give you pastors after my own heart who will feed the flock. He did not say that he would give us social media influencers. He did not say that he would give us um, bloggers. He said he would give us pastors. Amen. Amen. And in a day and time when so many treat the pulpit and the stage as a performance opportunity, I'm thankful for Pastor Steve who approaches this moment like a father in the living room, being very sensitive to the moment and leading this church, this great church, New City Church, almost four years old in the way that God would have us to go. Can we give another hand of, a, hand of applause for godly leadership, a shepherd after God's own heart? And what can we say about this worship team? Boy, I tell you, I tell you the truth. I just kept standing around. I'm not going to let y'all do that to me today. I'm not going to let y'all do that to me today. That's not had me an absolutely wreck. Boy, I tell you, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, so my family and I, we, we recently got back from a, um, a family trip. And I've come to know there's a difference between a family trip and a vacation. Um, <laughs> big difference. I used to say, are we going on vacation? No, the devil was a lie. He was a lie. No, we did not. We went on a family trip, and it was with my wife's entire family, 16 of us in one Airbnb. Y'all wasn't praying hard enough for me. Y'all, I just know. I know already. I know already y'all wasn't praying hard enough for me. But we went on a trip, a family trip down to Florida. And, we, of course, we were in Florida, and we did all of the amusement parks. And as we're doing the amusement parks, there are a lot of the parks now that have these 3D, even 4D uh, movie or ride experiences. And when you walk into the theater or the ride, uh, they give you a pair of glasses. How many people know what I'm talking about? They give you a pair of glasses. And if, 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 if you try to watch the movie or experience the ride without the glasses, uh, you see a very distorted picture. No matter how hard you strain and you even squint your eyes or you twist to make sense of what's happening on the screen, there is still distortion because of the dimension through which you are looking. And by handing us the pair of glasses when we walked into the attraction, they gave us a tool that we need to see the screen, watch this, without distortion. Mm. I think that one of the many problems that we face 
in the body of Christ, or just even in life period, is that we have a distorted view of this thing called life. We see what we see, but we don't see all there is to be seen. And I get somebody to shout back amen at me. And if all you see, let me tell you, my brothers, is if all you see is the physical or the visible scenario, then you are looking at your situation, watch this, without your glasses. And we need to have, we need to maintain or ascribe to a divine frame of reference in order to see what is really going on. You might think you know what's going on, but you need to put on your pair of glasses so that you can see what's really going on. Hebrews chapter 11, it is commonly uh, or, and, and correctly referred to as the Faith Hall of Fame. The Faith Hall of Fame. And in this chapter, God tells us some, uh, or tells us about some great uh, leaders or heroes of faith, men and women who pleased God. And, and can I just tell you something, let you in on a little bit of a secret? They all have at least one uh, thing in common with you and with me. Are y'all ready to know what they have in common with us? Y'all don't want to know? Okay. <laughs> this is... <laughs> The, the thing that they have in common with you and with me, watch this, is that they all had problems. Sometimes very big problems. But let me just pause and park parenthetically right there and let you know that you can have problems in your life and still please God. Uh, you can have crazy situations going on in your life and still please God. The Bible doesn't say that without a perfect life it is impossible to please him. It says that without faith it is impossible to please him. And by studying these great heroes of faith that we see here in chapter 11, I believe that we would discover everything God did in their lives, watch this, he did through faith. The same is incredibly true for us today. The word faith is found 25 times in this chapter alone. 25 times. And a study of these heroes reveal that the only thing limiting God's power in our lives is our faith. Look at what it says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. You'll see it on the screen. It says, according to your what? Faith be it unto you. <laughs> this is what Jesus said. Everything, everything, everything that God does in and through us is determined by our faith because without faith it is impossible to please God. And in this passage, I think we see three things. Three things uh, that are requirements, I believe, for pleasing God. Can I give them to you? No, y'all said, okay, I'm going to just talk to you because you're the only one in this. The first one is we got to remember what faith is. Somebody say, remember what faith is. As I study the word of God and I look more and more into this, these verses, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think, Pastor Steve, don't, don't shoot me. Deacons don't write in. Um, but I'm starting to kind of think that, 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 uh, there is no biblical definition for the word faith. I know some of y'all are going to say, wait a minute, you just read it. Hebrews chapter 11 and 1, that, that's, that's the definition. In my humble opinion, I think that what Hebrews 11 and 1 is, is a description and not a definition. Watch this. It says, now faith is the substance of things hopeful. <laughs> Um, here's why I say that, because the word translated substance, do we have a towel? Because I, y'all know, rotisserie chicken is on. <laughs> they they, they going to work on getting it for me. Um, uh, 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 that word substance, watch this, it's translated to hypothesis or hypothesis, which means that which stands under. 
That's what it is, substance, that which stands under. And here, in this context, it refers to confidence. So watch this. So faith gives us confidence. Faith gives us something to stand on regarding what we hope for. Okay, that didn't work. Let me try this one. Faith gives us confidence that what we hope for will indeed happen. All right, about 25 more, y'all. All right, let's try this one. Faith hopes when there is nothing tangible to support the hope. Lord, have mercy. And I wonder if I have anybody in this room today that can look back over your life and think things over and remember and testify that when it looked impossible, when it seemed highly unlikely, when I didn't have any proof, but all I had was my faith, and I, when I came to the end of the road, when I was hanging at the end of my rope, all I had was his word and my faith in his word. Do I have anybody that knows what I'm talking about today? Look at what it says in Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. Faith that pleases God, thank you. Faith that pleases God causes us to believe his promises. Watch this. Even when what he promises seems impossible. Can we talk for a little bit today? This, this, this is because, watch this, faith is the evidence of things not seen. See, non-believers, Pastor Steve, have five senses. Sight, sound, what? Smell, taste, and touch. However, the believer has a sixth sense. Lord, I feel like preaching this morning. And that sixth sense is faith. Faith gives us confidence and evidence of things not seen. And through faith, we perceive the invisible. I know this sounds very spooky, but I'm telling you, the just shall live by faith. Uh, this is the kind of faith by which the elders obtained a good report. This is why the Old Testament saints listed in Hebrews chapter 11 are not included. Watch this. They're not included because of their good deeds. They're not there listed because they did something great, but because of their faith. And listen, when we fully believe God's promises, we Gain God's good report. Another translation says it like this. Uh, 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 when we fully believe God's promises, we gain God's approval. <laughs> they gain God's approval. By faith, they gain God's approval. So number one, having a faith that pleases God requires that we remember what faith is. But number two, having a faith that pleases God requires that we recognize God as creator. I know you're saying, Pastor Devin, what are you talking about? You're talking about faith, and now you're going back to God being the creator back in Genesis. Just stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Faith that pleases God not only gives us confidence and assurance about God's promises, watch this, but also about the origin of the universe. This is because by faith we understand that the world's were framed by the word of God. See, faith not only lets us know where we are going, <laughs> but faith also helps us to understand where we came from in the past. That's why the old Reverend James Cleveland, he wrote a song that says, I don't feel no ways tired. Because I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road was going to be easy, but I don't believe. I have faith to believe that he didn't bring me this far to leave me now. And see, God's awesome power is unleashed, watch this, by his spoken word. God simply speaks. And what he desires happens. That's pretty amazing. 
Look at what happened in Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The Hebrew word translated created is the word bara, and it literally means to create from nothing. To do that, you've got to speak it into being, and that's what God did. There's a story told of three scientists who approached God, and they said to him, God, we can create human life from the dust of the ground just like you did. And they reached down to pick up a handful of dust. God smacked their hand and said, nope, get your own dirt. <laughs> you see, in the natural realm, something cannot come from nothing. But in <laughs> the supernatural realm, because God is not, God is in the supernatural realm. In the supernatural realm, he simply spoke and all that exists came into being. Psalm chapter 33, verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Glory to your name, God. When God spoke, hear me good, he not only created matter, but he created age as well. Let's go on a little science class a little bit. When you look under scientific examination, I'm going to help some people who got friends that want to just debunk everything you believe in because it just don't add up to them. I'm going to help you. Okay? When you look up under scientific examination, the universe that God spoke into being the previous day could legitimately appear to be billions of years old. For example, let me ask you all a question. How old was Adam in the garden? Well, we don't know. <laughs> but we know that he was not a newborn babe because a baby could not have survived in that element. So we should never be intimidated by those who question our intelligence because we have faith in a creator. And whatever a person believes about the origin of the universe, hear me good, they believe it by faith. See, the issue is not faith versus knowledge. The issue is really uh, faith versus faith. Faith in a creator versus faith in chance. That's what you're really up against. It is really faith in one of two equations. Hear me good. Nothing times nothing equals everything, or God times nothing equals everything. And I want to ask you a question. Which of the two requires more faith? <laughs> Believing in the first one takes a whole lot more faith, but their faith is definitely misplaced. Look at chapter 11, first, verse 3, just the B part. God created the universe so that things which are seen were made of things which do, by things which do appear. Were not made of things which do appear. There is no way, how can I say this? There's no way that the writer of Hebrews, more than 2,000 years ago, Okay, could have known that all matter consists of atoms and molecules. No way. Because atoms were first discovered by John Dalton, an English chemist, in the early 1800s. Atoms are made up of, particle, of particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. A, a, a molecule is formed when, when one or more atoms join together to form different elements or compounds. So atoms are so small that they cannot be seen with the naked eye or even an optical microscope, which can only magnify up to 2,000 times. Watch this. 
Seeing atoms requires an electron microscope, which can magnify up to 300,000 times. My brothers and sisters, that is what faith is. Faith is our spiritual electron microscope that enables us to see and understand what is otherwise invisible to the natural eye. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 expresses it this way. For we walk by faith and not by... Y'all read the Bible in this church, I see. You have to understand that what God is trying to get you to understand is that you must live this life by faith, not by what you see. That's the reason why we cannot be moved by what we see. We cannot be moved by what we hear. We cannot be moved by what we feel. Only thing that we can be moved by is the Word of God and our faith in that Word. Somebody ought to shout amen in this place. So to have faith that pleases God, you got to sweat. And then you got to remember what faith is. And then you got to recognize God as creator. But then my final point is simply this, is you got to realize the rewards of faith. You got to realize the rewards of faith. Faith that pleases God doesn't simply believe in God or his creative powers. It is so much more. Look at what verse 6 says. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. <laughs> and that he is a rewarder of those of them that diligently seek him. It is never enough to just believe in the cosmic creator. That's not enough. We have to have a conviction about God's moral character. Hear me good. We must believe that God is just and that he rewards us for diligently seeking him. This, this pursuit is solely to have a personal relationship with him. Jeremiah 29 and 13 says it like this. I think we have it. It says it like this. And ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with what? With all your heart. So there's a big difference between existing and living. See, that's why so many famous people, um, wealthy people, they die from drug abuse, even suicide. Why? Because they have everything that this world has to offer, but they are miserable. Why? Because they are just existing and they're not really living. John 10 and 10 says it like this. Jesus uh, tells it this people. He says, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The word translated abundantly simply means this. It means super abundant. <laughs> or beyond measure. This means that Jesus can give life a whole new meaning through promise and guidance. See, real living is so much more than just prosperity, possessions, prestige, popularity, power, so much more than that. Real living is to be loved, to love someone, and to have purpose for our lives. And how I many you know we can find all three in Jesus Christ? And it's only when we earnestly seek the Lord and find him can we experience that phrase that's wedged right there in Psalm 23, verse 5, my cup runneth over. <laughs> I used to have a problem with that verse because I'm like, cups don't run over. They don't. And then God says, you're right. Cups don't run over. The poor overpours them. I'm so glad we got a father who's our poorer 
and he continues to give us more than we ever even asked for. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. I don't hear nobody saying nothing to me in this place. Above all that we can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works in you. Who gave you that power? Him and him alone. The abundant life that Christ promises those who place their faith in him is not just a pie in the sky when we die type of faith. It is for us right here, right now. Can I just give you three things and then we're, we're going home. The first kind of faith that God uh, gives us is saving faith. Saving faith. This, I believe, is a one-time experience. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says it like this, For by grace ye are saved through faith. The reward, because he says, Hebrews 11 and 6, must be that he is, and that he is what? A rewarder. Come on, this is Sunday school. That he is a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek him. So if you're, so if you're seeking him for, for, for saving faith, let me tell you what the reward is. The reward for saving faith is salvation. Oh, that's good. Let me give you another one. There's also calming faith. Calming faith. Yeah, I remember one day the disciples, they were out on the, uh, on the water, Sea of Galilee, and Jesus was down in the boat sleep. And uh, when they... Uh, to, they got to like the middle of the sea and there was this terrible storm in the middle of the sea and water started breaking into and started coming into the ship and then they, they, they ran down to the bottom of the ship and they woke Jesus up and said, Jesus, 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 wake up. You got to save us because we're about to die. That's what they say. And then Jesus, Matthew 8 and 26 he asked them a question. He says, why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? You see, fear of life's storms, when the storms come, not if, but when the storms come, is a result of having little faith. Because fear is reciprocal or opposite of faith. The reward of calming faith is inner peace that we experience during many problems that we face throughout our lives. So, seek me. Must be that I am and that I'm a reward. The reward of calming faith is inner peace. But this last one is the one that I really want to get to New City today. And that is empowering faith. Somebody say, say empowering faith. As I was praying, I believe, I believe God gave, gave this to me for New City. Because see, empowering, experiencing God's power in our lives requires faith. Look at the example here. Jesus did not perform many miracles in his hometown of Nazareth, Matthew 13 and 58. And then the B part tells us why. Because of their unbelief. I believe that as we are approaching four years as being organized as a church, four years of worshiping God, four years of seeking God, four years of serving the greater Chicago area, I believe that God wants to show us that there is another level. And it's going to require, hear me good, empowering faith. I believe that God has shown himself real to so many people individually, but God wants to begin showing his power among you in groups. That's why signing up for a connect group is so important, like they talked about on the screen today. If you have not signed up, I can't tell you. See, see, the church does not grow by rows. The church grows in circles. And so you have to get connected. Why? To, to another brother's. Why? Because it is the way that God uses to not only it's one of the ways that God used to not only get a blessing to you, but also to work a blessing through you. And when God's miraculous power is missing from our lives, there's just one reason and one reason alone. Lack of faith. And the, re 
reward of empowering faith. Are y'all ready for this one? It's experiencing the supernatural things that only God can do. And I just feel, I feel it so heavy. I felt it even in worship today. That there are some things that, yeah, there are some things that we can do in the natural as a church, as a congregation, as a united body, as a spiritual family. We can throw money at this, throw money at that. But let me tell you something. There comes a moment, there comes a point where not even your money can satisfy that situation. There comes a moment when you literally have to fall on your knees, fall on your face before God and say, God, if you don't do it, it won't be done. And I feel like there is a moment among us even right now that there are some people in this place, though individually, but even for us collectively as a church, where, where, where we need to just cry to God and say, God, if you don't do this, it won't be done. Maybe you're listening to me at home and you're, you're, you're crying even on your couch right now. You, you're, you're despondent about the way things are going and how things have been working, how things have been flowing and functioning in your life. And I, I believe I've been sent here to stir up your faith to say, God, if you don't do this, it won't be done. And I believe that we serve a God that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Yes, for us individually, but also for his glory to be made manifest by, his, by what he wants to do in and through his church. I got to be honest with you. When I went on some of those rides when I was in Florida and they gave me those glasses, I was that guy, Pastor Steve, I was that guy that took my glasses off to try to see. What's so magical about these? Here was the thing. The more I tried to experience that ride or look at that screen without my glasses, you know what happened to me? I started getting dizzy and sick. And that's what's happening to some of us in this place. You're trying to go through this life without faith. You're trying to go through this life and experience this life without the tool that God has given you to walk through this life with and you're getting sick. Like Pastor Steve talked to us out there in the huddle about before service, he says, instead of us doubling down, we're starting to retreat. Oh, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe this is too much. No, 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 no. It's time to double down, put on your faith, and say the just shall live by faith. Everyone standing in this place. My grandfather was an old Pentecostal preacher. Sometime when he would be faced with a challenge, he would get up on a Friday night. We would have service on Friday nights. Let me tell y'all something. See, y'all don't really realize how good you got it. We got one Sunday, and then we got midweek prayer. But back then, let me tell you something. I, was, I had Sunday school at 9. Church at 1045, uh, Sunday, Sunday evening service, and God forbid we had a church fellowship at 4 o'clock where we had to go to another church right in the middle. And we thought that granddaddy was going to cancel night service because we had a 4 o'clock service. No, 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 no. We had the 4 o'clock service and the night service. And then we had Tuesday night Bible study, Thursday night choir rehearsal, Friday night pastoral night, pastoral teaching. I mean, we sat in, in, and we were doing something on the parking lot on Saturday. Something, something was going on. We're selling dinners, washing cars, raising funds. I mean, listen, we, we were always, but I mean, but sometimes he'll be facing some of those fierce battles. He would get up. He would just say the words of his song. He starts singing it. Faith, 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 just a little more faith. Faith, 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 just a little more faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use a little you got. <laughs> faith, 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 just a little more faith. <sighs> what he was saying was, even in the midst of what I'm going through, I can't do this on my own. I need faith in God. 
hands lifted. Matter of fact, no, no. If you're in this place and you know you need a faith awakening within yourself, I want you to slip that hand up right where you stand or right where you sit. Maybe you're here and you're saying, God, I want to believe for just a greater mighty move of empowering faith for our church so that we can experience the supernatural power of God so that we can see and know that it's not by our power, not by our might, but it is by your spirit, says the Lord. Come on, if you're here and you're believing that even for our church, come on, lift those hands. And I should see every hand lifted in this place today because we are believing God for miraculous things that it will only happen by, our, by placing our faith in the one that is able to do and perform the miraculous. Come on, all of this place, begin praying, begin praying, begin praying. I don't know what to pray, Pastor Devin. Go ahead and just pray, God, increase my faith. God, 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 I need more faith. I need more faith. Help me to trust you more. All for grace to trust you more. Trust you in the midst of our circumstances, God. Trust you in the midst of, of our problems. Trust you in the midst of our difficulties. Trust you in the midst of a bad situation, a bad relationship. I got myself into this mess, and I can't seem to get myself out of it. God, I trust and I'm depending on you. Oh, God, without faith, it is impossible to please you. God, I want to please you in all my ways. Help me, Lord. Help us, 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 Lord. Send the great revival. Send the great awakening, oh God, in our hearts. Help us know we can't move. We can't do it. We can't breathe without you. So we depend on you every step of the way. There are some of you in this place, I hear your Holy Spirit. Some of you in this place that are facing some health challenges. Maybe you got a bad report. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's, maybe it's a bad report, physical health report of a loved one. Let me tell you something. Let your faith arise right now. Let your faith arise right now. Begin to believe God again. Yeah, but I got disappointed last time I did that, Pastor Devin. It's okay. Try again. Trust again. Believe again. Believe again. Believe again. Have faith again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Try God again. Hallelujah. 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 Trust in the Lord with all your heart. There are parents here. Oh, my God. There are parents here that are that are concerned for their children as they have either gone back to school or they're getting ready to go to school, oh God. And they're concerned, oh God. God. Any parents in this place, if you have your, your, your teenager or young person with you, just, just place your hand on your children. If your children are not in here, maybe they're in kids' church, just place your hand on your heart and, and get them on your mind. We're going to pray and believe God, hallelujah, that God would do some, something in their lives, that God would be the head of protection around them even as they go back into the school year, oh God. That God, that, that you would raise them up to be a bold witness for you even in the midst of darkness, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We trust in you with all of our heart. We will not lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we will acknowledge you. We will have faith in you, knowing that you will alone direct our path. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. Glory to your name, oh God. We stand on this because this is our firm foundation. Our faith looks up to thee today. So we say as the song declared, rain came, wind blew, but it didn't change my position. Oh my. Oh my. Come on, someone lift those hands right where you are. Let that be your resolve today. Let that be your resolve today. Look up toward heaven and we say
Was built. 